Ahoy, you bilge lappin' landlubber. Hath ye the fortitude for another horn-swaggling craft and adventure? Keep your boots on deck, because in this here episode of Gamey Builds, we'll dredge the depths of Davy Jones' locker to recreate the most dreadful of beasts, the old crook clock that took the great Captain James Hook. Savvy. After heading towards the second star to the right and straight on till morning, I began my rubbish reptilian recreation with a blueprint. I'm referencing these stills taken from the movie to get the side view, then struggling to extrapolate the design to a frontal view, exposing my subpar artistic skills in the process. And yes, I'm back to sculpting with polymer clay because apparently I haven't learned my lesson even after multiple failures. I also purchased this assortment of clay working tools recently because as they say, a poor workman always blames his tools, so collect as many scapegoats as possible. But before we dive into this grey mess, I needed to make an aluminum cucumber to serve as the croc's core. All done! And just kidding. But once the core was complete, it looked like this, which makes this the second time in recent memory that I've made something that resembled Jabba the Hutt. Next it was time to cover the metal in croc flesh, so let me just slice into this one pound block of... Uh... Slice into this block of... Oh, this is professional grade clay. I think the stuff I was using before was toothpaste. I had to warm this stuff up quite a bit in my hands to make it pliable. I continued this process section by section, and in building this four-legged beast I was visited by another, though this one was slightly less scaly and slightly more cute. And I think this is what this tool is meant for, though this ball on the end is solid metal, and it really makes me want to chuck it off a cliff. Next I built the crocodile legs using the exact same method as before. I was just a teeny tiny kid when Hook first came out, and while my parents saw it in theaters, they thought it was too intense for me. Not the sword fighting, or the guy getting thrown into a chest with scorpions, mind you, but this scene yes, here. Now show me your fastball, dust brain, you paunchy sag bottom puke pot! I think they were afraid I'd start talking like this to our dinner guests, but that's ridiculous. I've never called anyone a two-toned, zebra-headed, slime-coated, pimple-farming, paramecium brain munching on their own mucus. No! And part of what makes crocodiles so darn cool is the fact that they're born wearing crocodile skin boots, which I'm making here with balls of clay. I then flatten them, slice them up to make toes, then smoothed out the rough bits, then roughed up the smooth bits. For the tail, I added these ringlets. This idea came from this video, which was the extent of my crocodile sculpting research prior to building. It was at this point that I realized my crocodile was awful tipsy, which is no doubt the side effect of eating too many rum-soaked pirates. Why is the rum gone? So to hide his drinking problem, I sat him aboard a board and drilled screws into his body. Then I discovered the use of this tool. Normally I'd just use a random edge for this, an exacto blade, a metal ruler, my fingernail, but this is way better. As great as my tool pack was, it was missing something to help the crocodile's scaly texture, so I made my own. I cut and then hollowed out this toothpick at one end, and I repeated this with a Q-tip. And another plastic tube from a mechanical pencil, thereby giving me three sizes of straws. For the wart-like protrusions, I pressed tiny specks of clay into the skin, then to complement that look, I used my homemade tube tools to make scaly indentations. It doesn't look great here because I was still experimenting and learning, uh, but it'll get there. Kind of. What I eventually realized is that less is more, and that just a few raised pimples surrounded by various shapes and sizes of acne scars looked much more natural. And with all that done, it was time for these dorsal plates running up and down the croc spine. And now on to galley cooking with scarf. 
After a hard day of pillaging coastal towns, nothing hits the spot like a batch of stewed crocodile arms. For these tasty tenders, you'll need copper wire, pliers, aluminum foil, and of course, clay. Everyone knows the flavor comes from the bones, so be sure to start with a wire base before kneading in a tasty layer of foil. With that scrumptious base finished, add in the supple gray croc flesh. Oh, and don't forget the fingers! Tough muscular meat is a no-no, so be sure to let these sit around in an armchair, preferably in front of an old Jerry Springer rerun so they can put away the tasty, tasty pounds. You're now ready to add those delectable croc arms to the rest of the croc casserole, after which a few extra armpit rolls can be tenderized into place. This is a thick boy after all. For an added kick, sprinkle some pepper flakes onto the shoulders, followed by an even coating of seasoning. Finally, baste the entire croc in rubbing alcohol for a smooth finish. Enjoy with a bottle of rum, or just throw this in the slot bin and drink the rum. I saved the head for last, first making a tiny ironing board for the bottom jaw, then building up layers of clay. I had that blueprint on hand for reference, but the end result was still too big, so I don't know why I bother with these things. I then gave the jaw a bit of character with these creases and scars and dents, all of which are pretty standard crocodile jaw features. Then come the scales, as per my usual methods. You're probably tired of seeing this by now. With the top and bottom jaws done, I attached them to the aluminum by pre-drilling a hole and then skewering it like a uh, rufio. And after just a bit more detailing, I added the bottom jaw. I baked the teeth separately. However, after removing them from the oven, I accidentally dropped all of the pieces on the ground, which made them dusty and gross and so I made them walk the plank into a cleansing sea of tap water. I added the eyes by carving out some clay from the sockets and using this ball tool to smooth out two hollow spaces. Then I inserted the pre-baked croc eyes. Lastly, I put in the teeth. And to make sure the jaws didn't deform during the baking process, I added a roughly clock-sized piece of chipboard between the teeth and finally added a tongue. After baking my crocodile to the hardness of cooked lobster, I primed him in light yellow for a base color, then added various shades of greens. Once I'd slapped in some Captain Hook Red for the mouth, I sloppily applied this cream color to the teeth. I then went back over the croc's body with some dark green, brown, and black washes because it still didn't look right. Come on, you can do better than that! One thing I've never mentioned before with washes is that after applied, one of the keys is then mopping up the excess with a napkin or towel. This gives more contrast to the final color since the dark wash is held in the recesses but removed from the raised surfaces. To make the crocodile look more aged and dusty as it is in the movie, I dry brushed it with a warm gray, then coated those soulless eyeballs in cold, calculating black. As for the base, let's not even talk about how long it took to razor blade my way through this 3mm chipboard or how non-circular it turned out finally happened. I'm having a total nervous breakdown. So I went for cheaper, more flimsy cardstock for the other side of the base's foam core sandwich and glued it all together. It looked pretty terrible, so I sanded down the rough edges for a more circular shape. Next, I coated the base in a mixture of paint, Mod Podge, and baking soda. And because I couldn't find a real clock of the proper size and style, I ended up designing one in Photoshop, cutting it out, then gluing it to a couple layers of cardboard. 
for the edge of the clock I glued on poster board, then painted. Incredibly, I stumbled across these miniature metal gears recently in my local craft store, which worked perfectly. The final touch was a bit of glossy Mod Podge on the parts of the clock that I thought ought to look like glass. After removing the croc from his temporary base and screwing him into his permanent one, then adding those large leather straps that I guess hold him in place using poster paper, I began building the wooden clock tower around him. For the wooden beams, I had previously sliced up a 1 4th inch plate of balsa wood, then used popsicle sticks to make the cross planks. To give the planks an old wood texture, I scraped them with a push pin and cut into the ends with a sharp X-Acto blade. How sharp, you ask? This sharp. I then added a dark brown wash to all of the wooden planks and beams, then dry brushed on some color. Though it's kind of tough to see the color of the tower in the movie, I went with these pastel hues because that seemed to fit the color scheme of Hook. I then drilled holes into the balsa beams and the corresponding spots on the base, then inserted bits of snip paper clips and glued. Cross beams were then super glued in place. And if you're into proper construction, I'd love to hear your suggestions on how to accomplish this, a weird angled rooftop, as I found it quite a headache figuring out how to get these beams to be cut at the right angle. I don't think the end result is terrible, but it certainly isn't great either. And for the thatch roof, I'm using raffia, and once it was in place, I weathered it up with a brown wash. Finally, the top of the tower. Like an elevator of mediocrity, the higher we go on this tower, the shoddier this craftsmanship gets. Lastly, I added a light sprinkle of flocking to the base around the croc's legs and tail, then added some tufts of miniature grass. And that was that. Oh wait, no it wasn't, I totally forgot to add the clock. And the ropes that bind the planks together, which I made from unraveled lengths of twine held together with white glue, and that was that. For real, this time. Well, it's done, and I don't have that much more to say about it. I clearly have an issue with making oversized heads that I need to work on, and also I'm running out of space in my tiny working area to stick these things. So for the first time ever, I'm doing a giveaway. That's right, I'm going to be giving this croc tower away. If you want it, just leave a like and a comment on this video, and be sure you're subscribed to the channel. When my next video drops, I'll announce the winner and ship it out to you. I'll put some other tiny stipulations in a pinned comment under this video, so be sure to read through that. So until next time, this is Gamey Builds, over and out.